Hi everyone, this is Jim. Welcome to this Blitz Chess postmortem. This is a postmortem of my uh, Blitz game number 213. I was uh, white here, kicked off with e4, and we got into the center counter with d5. So always an entertaining way to play. So I take the pawn. My opponent plays knight f6, which is the way I play it. Um, the other main move here is just taking the pawn back immediately with the queen, and then the queen will often go on a route like this and then back after playing the move c6. So I always thought that was kind of pointless, but uh, it's, a, it's a playable way to uh, go as well. Anyway, but this is the line I prefer, knight f6. And then just d4. I'm not bothering to try and hold on to the pawn. It turns out to be uh, not particularly good to do that. Um, so knight takes, and then c4. Um, somebody played this against me recently, so I thought, hey, why not? <clears throat> and it, it seems to be a valid move here. My opponent played knight b6, the main idea. Um, also, the knight could have just gone back to f6 there too. Knight f6 and knight b6, you see, are both about equally good. Um, and then if we back up here, <laughs> I play the first move that's maybe, yeah, okay. So knight f3 is the normal move here. Um, knight c3 is also a possibility. Let's see, the engine, yeah, the engine likes both of those moves, knight f3 or knight c3. Um, I, I didn't want to allow the pin, but I guess um, that's just not a big deal in this position. You have the bishop here to break the pin. So this move that I played, uh, h3, is uh, kind of a wasted move. And uh, we're out of the opening book, and my uh, opening advantage has already uh, diminished considerably, although uh, I guess black to equalize could play e5 here. <laughs> well, it's a funny move, but if you've ever seen the uh, the Budapest uh, gambit, you know, you'll recognize that pattern. Just uh, put that pawn up there and... Uh, you get it back pretty quickly. Um, the knight on uh, f6 is, is posed to attack it, and the uh, queens will get exchanged, so, so white will lose castling privileges. So anyway, my opponent didn't play that way. He played uh, g6. Logical move. And uh, so I'm okay here. And uh, get it. Let's see, knight f3, bishop g7. Get, get a normal opening advantage. This is typical of the uh, Scandinavian. It's, uh, the engine, for some reason, thinks that uh, white is better off <laughs> by maybe maybe a larger margin than you see in some of the other openings, but this is pretty pretty typical for the Scandinavian, and it's still quite playable for black. I play it, so not a big deal. I guess uh, the thing is uh, white has a lot of space in the center, and then uh, black castled king side here. Nice setup. Um, bishop e3, just uh, developing, defending, uh, over defending even the, the pawn on uh, <clears throat> the pawn on d4. Knight c6, continuing to attack. Yeah, so he's got three pieces attacking and three pieces defending. So I could see that coming. Uh, queen d2, setting up to trade off the bishops. Now he plays e5. So very interesting and enterprising move, but uh, here I have the response d5. It looks like, yeah, this is interesting, d5 is the uh, only way to keep an advantage for white. If you take here, um, you know, this just turns into nothing. Oh, well, it turns into an equal position or maybe one where, where black is slightly better. He can uh, take here. He could even take the queen first. Bishop takes and then get the pawn back. And, uh, yeah, there's just not a lot going on here. So uh, so d5 is a way to try and play for an advantage here. And then he makes, uh, is it here? No, I guess it's not here. He plays knight e7. Go bishop h6. Yeah, this might have been a mistake here. Bishop h6. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so uh, uh, we're all making slight mistakes in the opening here. Let's Let's check this out. If he takes the bishop... Um, this this should be a variation that's good for black. It comes here hitting my uh, queen, so I have to move. If I go to g5, he's just going to trade it. How about if I just drop back to d2? Then he's got e4 hitting my knight. Ah, uh, yeah. And I can't take this pawn. I, I was recognizing this problem in the game because he's got the rook coming here um, with the pin which would be pretty uncomfortable. So uh, he chases my knight and then plays e3. Yeah, so interesting play for black. And once again, I can't take it because of the skewer. So uh, so there's some, there's some uh, uh, points to uh, black's play here. 
Fortunately for me, he played knight f5 first. Instead of taking and then playing knight f5, he went knight f5 first. And that gives me a chance to take. And then here, uh, yeah, he takes back. I went uh, bishop e2, just preparing to castle and, and getting rid of these problems on the uh, e-file, the pins. Uh, rook e8, castle. Yeah, so here, knight d4. This was, this was the first real mistake in the game. The others were sort of minor inaccuracies, but this is a blunder because um, it just gives away a pawn here, and uh, so I take it. And now I, I should have a winning advantage, but you'll see very quickly, he plays queen f6, I take, he takes, and I play the move bishop f3, which was part of my plan all along. I didn't want my bishop to be under attack by the rook. I wanted to get it on a better diagonal. Um, I just overlooked the fact that the bishop <laughs> on uh, the bishop on e2 here was defending the pawn, which is under attack from the knight. So I just uh, completely uh, gave the pawn back, and my opponent spotted this. So I just uh, thought um, this was an interesting point to talk about. You know, sometimes you're just not in good form, and this is the kind of thing that happens. I mean, uh, in most games, even blitz games, I would just sort of automatically have in my mind, oh, this bishop is doing a job. It's defending a pawn, and so if I move it, I better make sure that that's okay. So, you know, I could sort of play these moves automatically and I wouldn't make mistakes like that because that would always be uh, something that's in the back of my mind, you know, something that that's, uh, I'm already aware of, so I don't have to explicitly check. So so when you're in bad form, that means you, you really have to be <laughs> a little more careful. Every move you have to make sure um, Okay, is this is this bishop doing something? Is it is am I creating a problem by moving the bishop? Are there tactics that my opponent has, threats that I'm overlooking, that kind of thing? So you can compensate um, to some degree, but when you're in blitz and you're playing uh, quickly, it re your your bad form very very much shows up. If uh, if any of you guys have been watching the uh, Chess Explained channel, he's been going through a spell where he's he's had some bad form, and uh, you see the same kind of things, sort of the. At a, at a deeper level, he, he misses tactics that are two or three moves deep and, and thinks he should have seen them. Uh, but this, uh, I'm just missing, uh, I'm just dropping a pawn here for no reason. Of course, my opponent did that too. So we're still, we're back to even, basically. I have my, my opening advantage. And the game goes on. So I should be okay here. He plays my opponent. No, I play b3 to kick the knight. <laughs> so, okay, so two mistakes in a row. First I drop the pawn, and then I kick the knight. Um, before figuring that actually this is a good square for the knight because it uh, forks my rook and my bishop and after I move the rook he can just grab this bishop which is a good piece uh, so it's good to grab it and uh, also it messes up my pawn and drops the h pawn <laughs> so he plays knight d2 and uh, so I move my rook it says here d6 is better I should play d6 he plays knight takes f3 why doesn't he take the rook this is interesting d6 how about knight takes f1, knight to d5 check. Okay, so there's some interesting stuff going on here because I have a fork. So it's not so simple as just uh, losing the rook there. Huh. Okay, so I didn't see that. Now that's that's sort of tactic I could easily overlook when I'm in good form, so that's, that's not something I'm surprised at. Okay, instead I move the rook, um, and he grabs on here with check and I have to take back and then he picks up a pawn. So it's interesting the evaluation is only um, 0.15 in favor of black. If I look at this, one, two, three, four, five, yeah, black has won a pawn and he seems like uh, he's got a good piece here in the bishop. Uh, my pawns are on light squares so the bishop can attack them. Yeah, I would, I would expect uh, black is much better here. It's funny. So uh, what does it say? I should play rook a to c1, just continuing my development. I thought it was interesting to try and mess up his pawns a little bit with the move d6. Um, so he took, and uh, yeah, look at this. It says uh, the game is about even again. Aha, I see. I'm missing uh, this tactic again. Knight d5 check, followed by knight to c7, is, uh, is a way to uh, win back some material. Hmm. Okay. So, but I saw I took I could take this pawn with check, and I thought I'd be chasing his king around. But his king uh, gets to a decent square here, rook d3. I thought well the king was coming to f4, so I needed to protect this pawn, rook a d8. And now, uh, yeah, I think Black has a simple plan here of just trading off material and winning the end game. So I think uh, this is correct correct play from Black. Oh, but 
it is correct play except that there's a tactic here. So if you look at this uh, evaluation, suddenly it's in favor of uh, white after this move rook ad8. So he should really play um, something else. Bishop f5. He has, his bishop is in an awkward spot is the basis of the tactic or move is king. So here's a little tactical quiz. If you didn't see the, uh, the, the tactic that just popped up for a second on the screen, after, after black plays rook a to d8, it is uh, white's turn to move. And what tactic does white have in this position? OK, uh, pause the video if you want some time to think about it. This is not a hard tactic, so uh, uh, and it's interesting. I think you should probably uh, look at this until you find it. So pause the video. And uh, I'm going to give away the answer now. The answer would be, um, well, I'll just show it here. The answer is uh, f5, f4, rather, f3 to f4. It's a double attack. The, the pawn checks the king, and the rook attacks the bishop. So let's put it on the board now. He played rook a d8. I just missed this, but I, I should play f4 check. And uh, king's in check. It needs to move. It, it grabs the pawn. And now I'm a piece up. I have a piece for two pawns. And uh, definitely the edge is in favor of white here all of a sudden. So uh, you always got to be aware of these tactics um, <laughs> on both sides. I should be aware of them, and my opponent should be aware of them. And that's the kind of thing uh, I could spot that on a good day in a blitz game. OK, I play rook e3 check instead, king d4, knight e2, just trying to cover some of these holes in my position so the king can't invade. Um, but he comes up with a plan to invade on the queen side. I wasn't really sure about this idea. Okay, takes the rooks off. I didn't really see a way of avoiding that rook trade, although I would, it would be better for me to keep material on. Bishop here. Rook c1 check. Yeah, I wasn't sure where the king was going, but the king is, is just making his way to the queen side here and gobbling up some pawns over here. But still this advantage, if you look at this uh, negative 0.4, so four-tenths of a pawn in favor of black. This is often not enough to win a game, particularly as you get into the end game. You know, you need to have a pawn, and it has to be the right pawn in many cases, or you have to have a good position to be able to queen the pawn. So, so I have hopes of uh, holding a draw here. I play uh, knight d4. He goes uh, king a3. And I grab the bishop, thinking that these weakened pawns will help me out. And the, the evaluation still is, is in this range where I should be able to hold a draw. So he plays, uh, I play rook c7 attacking. Ah, the engine approves of that. Yeah, it's often the case that in these rook endgames, your rook is best placed um, attacking your opponent's pawns. That's its job. If you can scoop up enough pawns, you can hold this endgame. Uh, but as, as the engine starts to look deeper, yeah, it sees that uh, um, I'm getting into a bit of trouble here. So rook c2, are there other options here besides rook c2? Yeah, so I may already be uh, losing here. It just takes the engine a little while to uh, figure out how bad <laughs> how bad my situation is. But as these numbers crawl towards a one point advantage, uh, you know, this gets kind of losing for white here. Okay, so he pushed on, and um, uh, he allows me to take a pawn or two, and we get back into the range of even. Ah, interesting. E5. So um, I try to activate my king and go after some more of these weak pawns. So when does it actually shift here? And plus, I'm holding on to the B pawn, which holds up uh, his A pawn. So I have two on three over here. And if I can just round up one more of these pawns, I, I would be in great shape. He has the outside pass pawn, which is very dangerous. Um, anyway, start going after some of these pawns. And he has E5 check. So here, um, I should have played E4 here. Yeah, I was thinking of this move. <laughs> and I almost played it. And then I said, uh, what about Rick here check? Of course. Rook here check is not possible. The pawn is guarding that square. So uh, I was just not uh, thinking clearly here. So I played uh, this move instead. So now uh, e4, king, king e4, or king g3. OK, so king e4 is the way to play this, keeping my uh, king active. That's, uh, you know, activity in the end game is really key. So keeping your pieces active. So he has to move his rook, goes, say, to c5. And then um, it's still not safe for me to grab this pawn with my rook. I need to hold on to the b pawn, but I could push f4 and uh, try and exchange off. And uh, the more the more pawns I can get rid of, the, the easier this is going to be for me to hold. OK, so I played the move king g3, moving backwards here. So that's 
the wrong idea. And he goes in with g5, and that's a very good move, keeping me uh, confined and, and not in a position to attack the pawns. I try the move uh, rook g6, and uh, I think this is probably the losing move. Yeah, okay, so this is the losing move. So I needed to try and hold steady. You see, though, that uh, already, I mean, it may already be lost. It's hard to say, but I should try at least the move uh, e4. Okay, so let's just go through the rest of it. I think Black's technique is really good here. So um, he pushes this pawn, which uh, breaks up my structure, and then um, plays rook to e5. And uh, let's see, I went rook b6. I was worried about his king taking over here. It says rook, rook d6, going this way, maybe coming around and checking the king. Um, but he had defended his pawns on this side, so I couldn't threaten to take them, so I came back to defend over here. He plays h4 check. So I get my king to a slightly better post, putting some pressure on the uh, g pawn, but it's still defended. And now rook takes e4, driving me back, well, let, letting me have this pawn, but now he has these two outside passed pawns, which he can push. And uh, more importantly, his king is, uh, his rook is cutting off my king, so I can't. Uh, stop this pawn from queening with uh, my king, and so I have to use my rook to slow it down. This is pretty much the only way to stop it. But now he has the uh, ability to take all my other pawns. And uh, we play on a few more moves. I can't, I still can't cross the line. This, this rook has set up a barrier here that my king can't cross, and so I need the rook over here because uh, at any moment he can push this pawn forward, and the rook is the only thing that's stopping it. But he has a second pawn, so with these two uh, widely separated pawns, it's very hard to uh, hard to hold the position. Should be winning for black. Let's see, a3, I play rook h7, just staying here. King b2, okay, and I resign at this point, because now uh, it's obvious, even to me, that this, this pawn has got a clear path, and uh, I can't stop it. And uh, you can see the evaluation from the engine point of view there, too. So if we back up to, uh, let's see, one of these critical moments in the end game. I think um, it, the first one was right here where I could have played. Um, so I, I had done well so far. I'd gotten my king active. I'd gotten my pawns up. And um, I just needed to find this move uh, e4 here. I think this was really my last chance to hold it. And it really starts to uh, go downhill after that. Um, so it just shows, goes to show there's chances, there's drawing chances in these endgames, um, but you have to have to look for them, have to find them, get, get your pieces active, and uh, <clears throat> do your best to harass the enemy king also with the rook. There wasn't much of that here, but uh, that, that also is a key technique in drawing. Okay, um, so I hope you guys enjoyed that. Leave any comments you have in the section below, and I will see you again soon. Bye.